Can a love for motorcycles lead to a gospel ministry? Stick around, and we'll talk about that and a whole lot more with our special guest on this episode of Here at Home. Welcome to the Here at Home podcast, a podcast about the people here at McGregor, their stories, their ministry, and their love for Jesus. My name is Mark Bricker, your host for the Here at Home podcast. And joining me on today's podcast is Mr. John Asher. Welcome to the show, John. Well, thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Man, so glad to have you be a part of this. And uh, you and I have been friends for for quite a while now, and uh, I just... uh, I don't know, several months ago, we were uh, either having a conversation or I was reading one of your texts and I thought, man, I think people would love to hear a little bit of John's story because you have blessed me in so many ways. And uh, that's kind of the whole purpose of the Here at Home podcast is just to kind of tell tell stories, not for the sake of uh, us looking better, but for, as we talked about a moment ago, about glorifying the Lord uh, through our story. So that's what we're going to do today. How's that sound? That sounds great to me. All right. Well, I, I've already given them your name. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, about your family. I'm married to Doreen for uh, 40-some years. Uh, got, we have three children, Aaron, Christy, and Leslie, and four grandchildren. And um, we've been um, coming to McGregor since 1999. 19, so we got here the same year. Yes, sir. Because I got here at the end of 99. I don't know what time in 99, but uh, we got here. I was November was my first month here in 99. I didn't know we had that in common. That's kind of cool. I knew we'd been friends a long time, but yeah, well, that's we got here the same year. That's awesome. All right. Well, tell us. Uh, we'll we'll jump into some of your 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 roles that you've had here at McGregor in just a minute. But tell us first of all, how did you come to know Christ? Well, it was in 1980. Uh, we moved to San Carlos Park up from Pine Island in 1981, and we moved right by a pastor. Uh, from Gospel Baptist Church. And he kept coming over mm-hmm. and inviting us to church, and I kept running him off, you know. <laughs> and then um, a couple of years later, Doreen uh, got pregnant with Christy, and I had heard the gospel from Bill Lytell, who was the pastor. And we were in Lee Memorial Hospital during the birth, and uh, ambibical cord got wrapped around my daughter's neck. Mm-hmm. And she was in intensive care for three days. Wow. And April 25th, 1983, I was staring out the window at, at McGregor, or at uh, the, the hospital, and I just came to the realization there's absolutely nothing I can do about this. Hmm. So that I uh, asked Christ to be my Savior at that time. And that was going back on the, the gospel that had been shared with you earlier by that pastor neighbor. That, yes, uh, yes, kept- sir kept coming and then you hit that low moment and turned your life over to christ wow and then we started serving at at gospel i was a bus minister in the bus ministry in awana doreen and i were commander i was a commander of awana and she worked in cubbies and which for those that are listening is uh is a children's ministry program that spends a lot of emphasis on bible memorization yes sir uh in that process yeah yeah so then then we came, um, we moved out of San Carlos. It was getting very, very crowded. We moved to Alva. The country. Yeah, in 1980, uh, 98. And that's, then we came to McGregor. Okay. So you figured you were kind of far away from where you'd been going to church. Let's look for something a little closer. Right. Yeah. Right. And so we got here at McGregor. So you've been here 23 plus years now. Uh, so what are some things you've been involved in since you've been here at McGregor? When when I first came to McGregor, I, I jumped right back in the Iwana program here, mm-hmm. and um, then I was on the deacon board at McGregor, and uh, we served with Rita in the children's ministry. Yeah, and we served in the preschool ministry. Uh, Dorian and I have been in the children's ministry for thirty two years. Wow! So the really neat thing about that is we had kids that were three and four 
that we had that we were teaching and we had the opportunity to teach their kids now you've got to see their kids yeah yeah. that is cool and that goes all the way around yeah that's and i so appreciate you and doreen and your ministry in that area because obviously you were blessed by serving in that area but what an awesome opportunity to have an impact on those young minds by teaching the word of God and investing in their lives and having those relationships. So thank you so much for your, your ministry in that area. And uh, now uh, we, Dorian and I serve in starting point. All right. And um, tell us, tell the that, listeners what that, what starting point is. Starting point is where uh, people that are new to the church or people that have been coming to the church and they just don't have a life group. <clears throat> so they come to starting point and um, Steve Jordan and his wife and Bev, we're involved in starting point and we get information from them try to figure out a life group that they would fit in Mm -hmm. and uh honestly our success has been pretty good it's remarkable yeah (laughs) hundreds of people have come through starting points and hundreds of people have gotten plugged into a life group that they're still in today because of that ministry and so what a what an incredible ministry that's been going on is it how many years do you remember uh no i don't but it's i'm guessing it's probably getting close to up to 10 years has to be close yeah what a, what an awesome ministry and I, I i am so grateful for that and the team that uh, you work with in that uh, that ministry they'll do a great job that came from uh i believe from people coming to church and not being involved in a life group and trying to help make it a little bit right. easier yeah. for them to get involved in a life group yeah now i know you enjoy uh riding a motorcycle right yes, uh, sir. Has, has that been something like since a kid you've enjoyed uh riding motorcycles when did and we're going to tie all that in and in a minute to a big part of what we want to talk about but where did the the love for for motorcycles come from well i was raised in michigan and um there was a lot of opportunity back in the 70s to ride motorcycles in the woods. And uh, then I, w- I went to the Army. When I got out of the Army, I bought my first motorcycle, 1971. And What kind was it? It was a Kawasaki 175. Mm, all right. Bought it from a good friend of mine who was a, a dealer. But we um, I've never been without a motorcycle or two or three um, <laughs> since that time. <laughs> two or three. <laughs> But you know, um, you look back look back at those times and all of the riding. I've ridden a motorcycle for four hundred thousand miles. Wow! And God's kept us safe. And yeah. yeah. So you started. It was you. You enjoyed riding off road primarily at first. Yes, sir. I was. Uh, I raced in the woods, yeah. called enduros. Yeah. And, um, it's really helped me with the ministry that I'm in right now. The the history that I've had with that yeah that's it that's really neat so you've had a love for motorcycles uh, you get saved uh, and the the love for motorcycles doesn't go away but it, uh, it probably gets put in a better pr- priority uh list in your life but tell us now how because i'm gonna go ahead and say this that you're you're very actively involved in an organization called cma uh christian motorcycle association is right. that did i get it correct okay yeah. Uh, but how did you, where did it start popping in your mind that my love for motorcycles could actually be part of ministering to others? Did you, had you heard about CMA or how did all that begin to happen in your mind? Yeah, I, I heard about it. Um, one of the main things was when you get saved and you're on a motorcycle, you want to get out of a certain bunch of people that you ride with oh, okay. uh, because a, a lot of motorcycle activity isn't where you want to be not godly <laughs> is that a good way nice way <laughs> that, to put that's it? a good way to put yeah. it but i had a friend when we were going to gospel baptist that was in the cma oh, okay his name was john ballinger and he kept after me and after me to join cma and i finally did and once i got involved in cma i saw all the opportunity that is there so when was that that you first got involved uh dorian and i were thinking it was probably in uh, 2012 2012 okay right so 11 years ago or so yeah got involved yeah. so you hear about it from a friend and they encourage you to to get involved what did you did you have any kind of idea and before you got involved what it what what the ministry was or were you kind of open-minded when you went in i was very open-minded because i saw when i'd go to daytona or different areas cma has a ministry tents hmm. set up so i already knew 
about what they did right. and, and how they tried to reach people. And that way, I, I had a, a kind of an idea of of what, what was going on. What they did. Right. So when you first, um, was it, did your friend just said, hey, why don't you come with me to a meeting or, or was it a ride or what, what, how did you, what was the first steps into it? It was a meeting in South Fort Myers at the library on Winkler Road. A CMA guy was there and I'll never forget what he said. He said, if you love motorcycles more than you love Jesus, then CMA is not a place for you. But if you love Jesus more than you love motorcycles, then we welcome you to CMA. So the priorities needed to be right. The priorities needed to be right. And their their doctrinal statement and everything is just right on. Yeah. Yeah. So what are so now expand for us a little bit, what is CMA? What what do they stand for? What are they and what are they involved in? What are some different aspects of this ministry? Well, the CMA has a, a motto that says we're here to help. Um, changing the world one heart at a time. And what we, what the CMA does is we go to uh, rallies. And I'll take you through a year of what C, kind of... Okay. The first, the first thing we do is something called C, um, Seasons of Refreshing. That's in January. That's where you go to, to a meeting in somewhere in the state of Florida and you hear the, the vision of CMA of the people from Arkansas who run CMA. You hear their vision, what they want, how they how they. So that's kind of where the national headquarters are in right. Arkansas? Okay. It's in Hatfield. Um, it's in Mina. It's up by Hatfield. And you kind of get their, what they want, what their plan is, hmm. their, their vision. Then um, that's, a, after that, we have a new members training that you can take at this, See at the at the uh, seasons of refreshing. Then the next thing that we have is Daytona um, Bike Week. Okay. And Daytona Bike Week is ten days, and um, it's it's you know you're there with five hundred and fifty thousand of your best friends. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so the opportunity at Daytona is huge for witnessing yeah we have a we've partnered with a friend a lady that owns a entire city block of buildings on main street she lets us park motorcycles behind those buildings in a huge parking lot and there's thousands of motorcycles that come in there there's people that have been coming there for years knowing that the cma is there knowing that we're going to watch their motorcycle we're not going to leave it just sitting there mm. and then we, the money that we collect, we give to her. Okay, she gives back a little bit to our mission for what we do, called Run for the Sun, is what the mission is. Yeah. So you're you're there uh, at Bike Week with all these people from all over the the United States, probably the world, that are there for this. What are some of the 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 evangelistic opportunities that are available for the CMA members? Okay. The parking lot, because when they pull in, we give them a little sticker. It's, it's, uh, it says, I was blessed in 2023. Mm -hmm. And then when they pull in, we ask them if we can pray for them and um, mark the, the feedback. The, 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 you don't get rejected, yeah. put it that way. I mean, it, it's just it's phenomenal how, how many people... And I, this is another thing I want to bring up, encouragement. Because we look at what's going on today, and being where I'm at, what I do, I see a lot of encouragement hmm. with, with people. I see a lot of people willing to pray. A lot of people want to know yeah. what we stand for, what we do. CMA has become very well respected in the motorcycle world. I mean, we don't... For someone to turn down you when you want to talk with them, in what I do is, is very seldom. Yeah. Very seldom. Well, I love because you do this all the time in your ministry, as well as even outside of CMA, is that that question, is there anything I can pray for you right, right now? And that doesn't always open up a gospel conversation, but it sure does open up a door oftentimes for some people uh, that are hurting or struggling. Uh, and even at a minimum, a chance to pray for somebody is always a, a wonderful thing and to be able to share you know your source of hope yep. in christ as you pray with them so talk about how that how those conversations sometimes go from 
just a prayer request to to a gospel conversation? Well, um, most people will allow you to pray with them or let you pray with them as soon as you say you want to pray for their kids or their family or a need that they have. And a lot of times you can you can open the the door. I've been I've been to uh, events where I prayed with so many people in a day. I've called my wife and said my voice is actually gone. Hmm. And um, that's good, but there's a lot of um, emotion because you're just not praying with some. You, you hear stories that really are un, unbelievable. They're off the charts. Yeah. So you're yeah. you're drained emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But but it it turns into a you know I have I I ask people all the time do you have uh, do you have your kids involved in Sunday school or a church and you know a lot of times the answer is no I don't and then then it leads into well you really need to do that you know because you look around the world today and there is no right or wrong being taught anywhere mm -hmm. so you have to find that where you can find right or wrong and almost everybody has to agree with that statement now. Thinking about Bike Week, I have actually, because I went to college up near Daytona Beach, uh, I have actually, I think by accident, a couple of times driven through Daytona Beach during Bike Week. <laughs> 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 Not being from that area, you're like, wait a minute, what happened to the, the Daytona Beach town I'm used to driving through to get to the beach here? Uh, and it is just taken yes. over with, with, with bikes. And I think a lot of people just think, oh, that's got to be a scary time because you know certain reputations right. go with bikes you know right. you know with motorbikes uh yeah. especially for that particular week how is it that 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 becomes like the best opportunity one of the best opportunities for you guys to share the gospel instead of saying well we shouldn't associate with those people no right that's uh, i can tell you that the the most important thing that you can do is you got to kind of look like the part of the biker. You just, <laughs> you, you have to do that. Right. Uh, I think the Apostle Paul says, I've become all things to all men. Well, th that you have to, because when you just walk up to a group of motorcycle people and, you know, you have to have a line to get in there, you know, like, hey, I like your wheel or that paint job is awesome or, or something like that. Yeah. And it, it breaks down a barrier. Able to connect. Right. Yeah. Like if I walked in there like this, they're 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 they they're not going to listen to me. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it's you have to. I I think something I learned from John Crawford. You have to let them know that you care and that you love them mm -hmm. because that is a really they can pick up on yeah. that real fast. Yeah, and I think again when you start with with asking for prayer i mean that 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 indicates that you do care i mean not somebody that didn't care that it's not going to take time to want to pray pray for me or my kid or whatever i'm going right. through so that's a that is good now you do a lot more than just uh bike week in daytona what are some of the other type of events that uh that you're you are specifically a part of well there's there's one big one that it's in daytona but it's uh a friend a CMA member named Sonny Edmondson has got us involved with the motocross and supercross world of motorcycle, where all the young people are. Mm. Praise the Lord, the opportunity there is huge. We work with promoters at the Daytona Speedway. We're able to stay in the Daytona Speedway, in the owner's campground where people like Dale Earnhardt and Jimmy Johnson, where they park their RVs. Mm. We can park our, our RVs in that campground. Wow. And we serve in there, like at the, at the motocross races, we, we do uh, staging, we run, run the gates, we do all kinds of stuff in there. The so you're actually serving that facility to make sure those races are taking place. You're actually working pretty hard. You know, oh, it, it starts at seven in the morning and quits at eight o'clock at night. And these are just all volunteer CMA members. Yes. Wow. Yes. And every once in a while you get somebody that'll come up and say, you know, because it's hot, and they'll say, how much do you get paid? And, you know, well, we don't get paid. You know, but, <laughs> and, and what you get for lunch is a little Bach lunch that the promoter brings from Pan L or Pan, whatever the, from a restaurant, yeah. Chick fil A or something. Uh -huh. So, and you eat it while you're standing there. But for, for two days at Daytona, we do nothing 
but park RVs. Hmm. There's that many RVs that come in there. So we got we help park them into a spot where so that they can get everybody in because they sell these RV spots. Yeah. So if somebody goofs up, you know, and another thing when you're staging motorcycles at the Supercross or the Motocross, you're on ESPN at Daytona. So you got the promoter yelling at you. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Because ESPN doesn't want any slowdown in, in, the, yeah. in what they're doing. But it's really awesome um, to be able to, you can pray. I've walked up to groups of young men, eight, eight young men, and walked right into the midst of them and said, can I pray with you guys? And, and Mark, their hats come off and their heads bow. Mm. It's amazing. Yeah. So this, by your ministry, the CMA ministry, volunteering, at an event, a huge event like this, pretty, pretty, pretty major, major event, gets your your foot in the door, and so now you have access to these to these young men, to their families. A lot of them are there with their parents because they're very young. Uh, so, what does that ministry? How does that ministry begin to happen? You mentioned just asking to to pray, but what are some other ways that you know you are able to specifically minister in that setting? Well, what, what we do is as we're working and we're getting numbers for the riders and telling them where to go and everything, and then they're usually there with a mechanic and one, one mechanic, one rider. So you're able to talk with them and, and just, you know, how can we help you? What can we do? You know, can, can we have water? We have every, you know, and that opens up the door for us to really uh, minister to them. Mm, yeah, so you're serving them but also having an opportunity to minister. I know you have shared with me in the past about just the, you know, the being able to go around and, and, and especially even with some of these parents uh, and, and talking yeah. with them and because they're, they're a little worried that, you know, their 15 or 16 or 17 year old kid out there yeah. might, or even younger than the smaller <laughs> ones, yeah, might get hurt really bad because it does yeah. happen sometimes. It's a dangerous sport at Adver times. Yes. Yeah. And so th that that's opened the door to some some pretty deep conversations at times. Well, that's at an, another event that we do. Oh, okay, it's called Minios, and that's the Thor Winter Olympics. It's the largest amateur motocross event and supercross event, one of the largest in the United States. Wow! So you guys don't do anything small, do you? You hit oh, the, the, <laughs> the big events. <laughs> the, this year there was six thousand registered racers. Racers! Wow! At Minios. Where is, uh, where is that held? That's up by Gainesville. Okay. In a little town called Newberry. Yes. Okay, there was 10,000, estimated 10,000 RVs <laughs> and an estimated 20,000 people. Wow. And this is in a field. A, pr a promoter rents this property and then there's motocross tracks and supercross tracks built there. And what's really cool about it is um, two years ago, I got, Sonny got me a, a golf cart and he called, they changed the ministry to my ministry that I'm involved in called um, Mingle, Mingle and Minister. And that's what I was telling you about. I, you can drive up, drive up to a campsite where people are camping and just hop off and, and you say, hey, Dad, who's racing? And the guy will say, well, my son or my daughter or me and my family or, or my wife. And then you say, man, I'd like to pray with you. And, it, you know, it's just like the guy calling the whole family over, hey, this guy wants to pray with us. Get over here. Mm. So it, it's just a phenomenal opportunity. Yeah. And then what happens is you get to talk with them a little bit, find out where they're at um, spiritually. And a few years ago, I told somebody how many people that I could allowed to pray with and, and this guy says to me well anybody can pray with anybody and I thought to myself you know he's right and um, so I started tweaking my prayer a little bit mm. and now when you got people praying the way that I way that I'm finishing my prayer now is um, Romans 10 9 that if you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior believe God raised him from the dead believe in your Lord heart confess Savior. with your mouth thou shall be saved so when you got them all with their head bowed and they're listening to you, you give them that gospel message. Mm. And um, that really, it's, if it's, it's effective. Mm. And then you go from that campsite to the next one right beside them. It, it's just 
one right so did they create this position just for you this ministry and mingle and ministry or had they had this they no (laughs) they saw your gift in this john (laughs) which is genius on their part to go hey this guy can can talk to anybody he loves the ministry part of it uh I don't blame him. Give him a golf cart and let him go. Let him loose. <laughs> well, the neat thing was the golf cart said official vehicle. Uh, oh, okay. So when you pull into the campsite, they're all looking at you. Know, oh, oh, that yeah. guy's official. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> now, you have fairly recently, uh, I think it was last year, now are a chaplain. Is that correct? Or is that? I, I was, but I, I moved from that chapter Okay. That was in Naples. Okay. Right. I, I moved from that chapter up to Fort Myers. Okay. Chapter. We meet in the Honda shop right here across from McGregor. Okay. I had, um, last Saturday of the month. So you're no longer the chaplain of your chapter. No, I'm. Okay. I'm involved in this this chapter now. Yeah. So now I'm the I am the vice president of the Fort Myers. Oh, okay. Chapter. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, mingle in ministry uh, <laughs> at the at that particular event. You know, it that is that is really a um, a huge opportunity to the more people that see this is what's happened. Um, CMA is seeing that this is growing, mm-hmm. so there's more people from CMA coming to to help. We help at gates where they're, you know, like what you said about somebody getting hurt. We 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 block the gate for the ambulances Hmm. because you know you can imagine if uh, somebody's kid gets hurt out there well the parent wants to run out there on the track and and you you really can't because they're still racing yeah it's so we we try to block that and then we open the gate so the ambulance can get in and out yeah hey uh before we get uh because we're gonna have to wrap up here fairly soon but i know there were several things you wanted to let us know or let me know and our listeners know about some of the other things that cma is involved in outside of just these these events where you're there to to minister and and share the gospel but involved in some missions and some different things share with us a little bit about about that okay cma we have one um event called Run for the Sun. That's where we collect money, and then it's dispersed to different missions. And one of them is um, the the evangelism that we do here in the States, the, the CMA. We have 1,400 chapters in the United States. Wow. We're in 38 countries. Hmm. And um, the, we have something that's really encouraging is something that everybody's heard of. I'm sure it's called the Jesus Film. Mm-hmm. Well, the Jesus Film is alive and well in other parts of the world. Oh, yeah. yeah I really, um, there's millions of people. Mm-hmm. I think it's even billions have seen this now. And then we have, we, we support a mission called Missionary Ventures. That's where we buy motorcycles or boats or whatever for pastors in different countries so that they can get up into the mountains or the hard to get to places right yeah i remember you sharing with me yeah. about that i thought that's also another great idea to, to come alongside and help these pastors that struggle to get to because they might be a pastor of multiple churches and one might be easy to get to but three might be right a, a, a day walk if you don't they don't have a motorcycle well that's the thing that cma found that if if they had a transportation they could reach more people yeah out there some of them are up in peru you know i mean just places where you it's hard to get to. And then we uh, support one called Open Doors. Open Doors is where they take Bibles into like Iran, into the countries that you can't. Distribute Bibles under, legally. Yeah. Underground yes. um, act deals there. But CMA started, our fundraiser started in 1970. No, CMA started in 75. Our fundraiser has been going on for 35 years. Mm-hmm. Okay. In that 35 years, CMA has given $100 million to missions. Wow. That's awesome. That is phenomenal. Yeah, that really is. Yeah. That's cool. I, I know you're excited to be a part of that. And if somebody want, is has a love for motorcycles and would be interested in getting in CMA, uh, what would be it? Do they have a website that yes. they could go to? Okay. It's a CMAUSA.org. Okay. And you can find the local chapter there. And yes. you can find the Fort Myers one. They already know where they meet the Honda dealership on Colonial. Do you right. meet once a month? Uh, the last Saturday of every month at 10 o'clock. The last Saturday of every month at 10 o'clock. They could yeah. probably just show up, couldn't they? Certainly. Yeah. And yeah, they we'd look- like to invite anybody to 
and they'd, they'd look for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, John, thank you so much for uh, being a part of our Here at Home podcast and sharing a little bit of your story of in being involved in ministry through CMA. And I know, and I'll just say this again, and I, I mentioned it briefly, just you know, allowing me to to pray for you at different times for different events and hearing how God has used you and the opportunities that he gives you and how you have been faithful to not just to go out and to pray, but to look for those opportunities to share the gospel with people. Uh, you've been an encouragement to me, and I am praying that you will be an encouragement to our listeners that are listening right now as well, that we all have an, we all have a gospel ministry Amen. as followers of Jesus Christ. And it might not be through CMA for everybody, right. but there is a way that God wants to use you uh, to get that gospel message out. And uh, thank you for being willing to share how God specifically is using you. So thank you also listeners for being a part of our Here at Home podcast community. And I would encourage you, if you are listening maybe for the first or second time and you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, please take a moment to do that. Also, uh, go ahead and click that notification um, bell on there so when we have new content coming out like this, you'll be notified. And thanks again for listening. And we'll see you back here in a couple of weeks, right back here at home.